First love. First love. You, Jesus, are my first love. You are first. First and Lord, we declare that we are a house of first love. We are a church of first love. Lord, it's who we are. We put you first. You alone, Lord. You alone. You're, you're everything. You're what's this all about. You're the reason why we're here. You're our first love, Lord. And we can't go anywhere else because you alone have the words of life. Lord, you are our first love and you always will be our first love. Love. We are a people of first love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you and praise you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, there's a river of God that's flowing through his first love people. Through his first love people. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the river of God. Thank you, Lord. Wherever the river flows, there's life. Wherever the river flows, there's life. Wherever the river flows, there's life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the life. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the glory that's in the river. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hmm. And we, each of us, but all of us together, we rebuke distracting spirits. <laughs> distracting spirits that come on our lives, that come in our homes, that come over this house. We rebuke all of them. They just get blown back by the power of first love. They just get blown away into smithereens, Lord by the power of first love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for releasing the power of first love over your church, Jesus, over each of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. In this presence right now, in this atmosphere, we want to take of the Lord's table. So the elements are going to come around. And as they do, grab the bread, grab the cup. But we're going to stay in this atmosphere of first love. Okay? First love. If you need gluten-free, grab a cracker instead of the bread. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we love because you first loved us. 
And as a result, you became our first love. You first loved, and now we first love. <laughs> Thank you for this body of love that was given for us on that cross. Love was nailed to that tree. Love was pierced and poured out life, water and blood. But love was not broken. Not a single bone. <laughs> but love was given. You loved first. Before one of us even existed, you loved first. You loved first. And as a result, Lord, we choose you as our first love. All those distractions, all those other voices calling us to love them first. We don't hear those anymore. We don't see those anymore. We have been captivated. We are a captivated people. I am a captivated person. I cannot look away. <laughs> I cannot look away from my first love. Thank you for the body of love, Lord. And we declare your body, my body. Amen. Your love, my love. Go ahead and eat. And your blood, my blood, your love poured out, my love poured out to you. Go ahead and drink. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for expanding into us at the table right now, expanding into us the fullness of everything you paid for. The fullness of everything you paid for, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If the Lord has given you a word for the whole house this morning, it could be a picture, it could be a scripture, it could be a song, it could be something else, I don't know. But if it's for the house, it's for today, and it lines up with the word of God, then let's share those and we'll respond to what the Lord speaks. I already know there's some words of knowledge that the Lord wants to heal some bodies today. So... Be ready for that, okay? But. Dion, I, as we, you were praying, it's really funny how sometimes you just hear something and it just, it's so funny. I heard Barry White singing, you're the first, you're the last, my everything. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All we need is love. Um. When we first started worshiping, I was praying about what John said about the fast and such mm -hmm. and praying into that. And then I heard the words um, faithfulness, obedience, and patience. And then when we were singing the song, I don't know the name of it, it's about pouring out your love. Yeah. I saw a picture of a black uh, water pitcher, and it was made out of stone, hematite, 
specifically, which is a black, shiny, mm. almost metallic looking stone. I don't know what the significance of that is, but it was very obvious to me. And out of it was pouring first water, then grass, then flowers, then trees, then mm. people. Mm. And I took that to mean that there's, God is giving us abundance and mm. we just have to be patient for it, patient for it. Mm. And it's been obvious in the last, you know, th months that that's yeah. been happening. And then with what happened at the fundraiser for Elizabeth. So yeah. abundance is in store for us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I can hold it for you. Okay. Uh, I kept hearing this morning, Papa's proud. Thank you. I hear you and see you, loved ones, and I'm proud of you. I have seen what you have been through, and it has not gone un unnoticed. I'm putting the, the enemy on notice, hands off my beloved. <laughs> You are about to see my glory in ways you have never mm. experienced before. Mm. I am going to wrap you in my love and glory, and you will experience my Father's heart toward you in a personal and corporate level. You have asked for, my, for more of me, and I will not deny you. This, my children, you can count on. Love, Papa God. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I just, during worship, I saw God's huge hand under us. He was holding all of us while we were worshiping. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> As we were, were singing, um, I just had a vision of of um, Mary when she broke the alabaster of oil. Now, this was precious. This was very expensive. And she was not only... She, she, this was her offering to Jesus because look at what she did. She surrendered. She surrendered all and she recognized who he was and what he was bringing into her life. Mm. And I think I felt like the Holy Spirit is saying, Let me anoint you. Mm. Let me anoint you. Mm. Just as she broke the oil of alabaster over him and it exuded the fragrance. We are to be a fragrance for him. And I was looking at my Bible uh, for the um, scripture, and it said when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster, a flask of very costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table but when his disciples said it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been used or sold for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a 
good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but you do not have, but me you do not always have. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, now listen, that is the anointing oil that we receive from him to preach to the whole world that this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. But that's what he's, I believe that's what he's speaking to us. And as we believe in him, as we put our all of our confident assurance in him, as we trust in him no matter what comes our way or what it looks like or how we feel, his light will be in us. He will move through us. And he will touch others, but we have to be willing to lay it all down. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, mm -hmm. but in all your ways acknowledge him and he or Jesus will direct your path. As I was sitting here and worshiping, I felt the Lord say that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. What you're experiencing now is nothing. I've seen your hearts. I've seen your cries. I've seen what you've been through as a pastor, as a congregation. Because I have not put one thing aside. I'm working in each one of your hearts. I'm molding you. I'm making you. Thank you. But lean not to your own understanding. Not your own understanding. I'm your understanding. Yield to me. Yield to me. And I, the Lord Jesus, will direct your path. Mm. Yeah. I feel like there's a faith. It's, I struggle for the words because it's not a faith that's released because you already have the faith of Jesus inside of you. It's a faith that's, it's a, it's a faith that's manifesting. Okay, it's expanding into you and me to believe and to trust on a deeper level than we have before. To live from faith on a level we've not lived from before. Because this life we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God. Okay? So some of these words about surrender, trust, it comes down to this, this thing that the Lord's releasing right now. Let's let's come into agreement. Did you have something? No, oh, okay. Let's come into agreement right now with this. I just man, I just feel it. Lord, we say yes to your faith having a greater place in my life than in what it has to this point, Lord. That your faith right now advances inside of me and pushes out unbelief and doubt and fear. That your faith takes the place that these things used to occupy inside of me. Lord, your faith that I would simply believe what you say. <laughs> it's very simple. I'd simply believe what you say about me or about situations, about someone else, about, about the enemy or the, the spiritual atmosphere around me. That I'd simply believe. No more doubting. No more wavering. 
I'd simply take you at your word. Thank you for this expansion of faith right now that you're releasing. Whew, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. There's bodies that need to be, um, that need to follow in line with what Jesus is doing. Okay? <laughs> so, we have one word of knowledge already, but I, I have a couple more. Um, so, Kelly, what you were sensing something last night. Well, last night I had a word of knowledge for somebody, uh, for allergies, but the, and Lord's more to heal people with allergies, but specifically for the ones with uh, being attacked by black mold. It's okay. attacking your immune system. Yeah, so does that hit anybody? Allergies and something that coming from black mold. But allergies, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to pray over all these together, okay. <laughs> yeah, Mary Jo. It's true. You may not know that you have black mold. Yeah. We'll just cover all allergies because Jesus is very generous. Okay. We also, uh, I also want to counsel you that uh, to not just believe allergies are a part of everyday life. Okay. You are in the kingdom now and allergies do not exist there. So don't just accept those as part of being alive. Okay. Uh, the Lord healed me of allergies when we first moved to Idaho. And, and uh, I haven't had any since. So um, I know the Lord does it. I've seen the Lord do it in others. Corey has received that healing himself, haven't you? Yep. And so we'll, we'll pray for that and declare over that, okay? Yeah. Asthma? Yeah, the Lord's generous. I'll just throw it all in. But uh, specific, other, one other word. Anybody with right elbow problems? That goes down the forearm somewhere. Elaine? Okay. Anybody else? Paul? Okay. Right elbows. Okay. And then the other thing, and this was, I feel the Lord's, ooh, yeah, the Lord's anger against autoimmune diseases. I feel his anger. He's mad at autoimmune, autoimmune diseases. And I know there's some in this house who have autoimmune Who's that? You have autoimmune? Okay. Oh, yeah. Barbara Bundy. We can stand in place for her. Carrie. Shawnee. Heather. Uh, Robin. Cheryl. Therese, Teresa. Okay. All right. Okay. If, if one of these words hit you, stand up. All right. If one of these words of knowledge hit you, stand up. The Lord wants you better. He wants your body whole. All right? I think that's part of the reason why there's a faith release this morning. Okay? There's a faith expansion this morning. Okay? Because the Lord wants to heal and make your body well. All right? So, let's get hands on all these ones that are standing. Okay, if you're next to them, go get your hand on them. All right. Okay. For the allergies, rebuke them. Come on. If, it, if you're standing for allergies, just rebuke them. Okay. If that's the issue of the person you're praying for, rebuke them. Tell them to go. Tell them to leave. They're not part of the kingdom. Okay. If it's for the elbow... Re, uh, declare uh, freedom and a release in that elbow, okay? Declare freedom and release in that elbow right now, okay? If it's an autoimmune disease that we're praying over, declare, this is what I heard the Lord say, declare over the autoimmune disease that the end of that disease begins today, okay? Declare it over that autoimmune disease. That's the word of the Lord to that autoimmune disease, it's his anger that's being brought against that thing that has hurt and hindered your life. The end begins today.
of these autoimmune diseases. The end begins today. The end begins today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our overwhelming, magnificent healer. You don't miss a beat. You get everything, Lord. You heal it all. Everyone who comes to you is healed, Lord. Everyone who comes to you is healed. Everyone. You bought this with your blood. You want it, God. You want the fullness on your people, Lord Jesus. So we release the fullness, the fullness, the fullness of the blood, of the, of the purchase of Jesus on your life. Everything he, he bought. We release the fullness of it on your body right now. Body, we command you come into alignment with what Jesus has given you. Come into alignment right now. Come into alignment right now. You will breathe better. You will move better. You will function better than you have. Today is a new day for your body. Today's a new day for your body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we can we praise the Lord? Can we just applaud the Lord? I know you're doing it, Lord. We know you're doing it. Because you're the healer. It's who you are, God. It's who you are. Thank you, Lord, for the victory. Yeah. 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 Okay. Does anybody have a testimony in the now of a healing in your body that you felt already? You felt the power of God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of this is going to work out over time. I know it will. Some of it will. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Belinda. While we're talking about healing, I just wanted to um, share with, with you guys that God has already be started to heal issues in my body. Yeah. He's already started um, like a month ago. Um, I've noticed that my headaches are fewer, mm -hmm. and I think it's because um, I started thanking him in advance <laughs> for his healing, and I'd yeah. never done that before. <laughs> so I want to encourage you guys to do that because it works. Yeah. <laughs> Faith of a mustard seed. Yep. I am doing so much better. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just felt prompted by the Lord to share this way of dealing with it when it wants to come back. Whatever it was, you know, autoimmune or an elbow or allergies. Uh, in the mid-2000s, I was, depression was trying to come back on me. I had been suicidal as a teenager. And um, the Lord actually said something to me. He said, Scott, I did not create depression in the garden. So what, that, what he led up to, or what he said after that was, talk to it. So I started to talk to depression. And I said, the first thing, when I started to feel it was either already covering me like a 100-pound blanket, or if I felt it approaching, I said, you're not from God. Yeah. That was the start. And I'll just stop there, talk to it, and say, you're not from God. Identify its source. Yeah. That's yeah. Yep. Yeah, the days of acceptance of these things are over. Yeah, it's not our norm anymore. I like, I like the new norm of God. I, I'm waiting and believing for the testimony that I have, and I am waiting for it to manifest, because it will. Yeah. But in the meantime, I wanted to share that Fiona, who listens to us online all the time, she's not here today, or she would be sharing it. She's in Canada. But she had to go to her own church today. But we're her church too. And she wanted to share that last week that she got healed for something. I'm going to let her tell what it was she got healed from herself. But she got a healing from our prayers last week online. Yep. Yep. 
And there was another lady uh, who was watching online too and responded to that word about heart and pain in the heart. And uh, as she was watching, two days later, the Lord was moving on her, and she could feel things changing in her heart. She could feel the pain leaving, and she, yeah, she said, my heart is feeling a lot better. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, 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 so, all right. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. There's, mm, the Lord's lining up a lot this morning. Okay. I want you to pay attention to the worship songs that we sang. Okay. More, all of you is more than enough for all of me. You already declared that, you know. All right. So, and then... What, what was the third song? We, the second one was, He is Faithful. He, I want Jesus. And, and it's surrender and like, you're, and even in that song, we were declaring that He is more than enough. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, because that's basically what the Lord put on my heart to talk about too. Uh, so, yeah. I almost forgot. Let's give to the Lord right now. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for sowing into what the Lord's doing here as we also, uh, I'm, I'm so grateful because as a church we give away 25% about, sometimes somewhere in that vicinity, we give away 25-30% of what comes in to missions, to, uh, to min local ministries, and uh, to uh, needs within the body. And, you know, I just, I'm, I love that we're so generous like that as a family. So it's just, what a blessing. It's so fun to give. It is. It's so fun to give. You can feel the pleasure of God's heart when you give, you know. Have you ever given a, 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 a had a gift to give for a birthday or Christmas? And you're more excited for them to open it than they are to receive it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how God feels, by the way, many times. He's like, oh, they're going to get it. They're going to get it. I'm so excited. They're going to open this thing. They're going to get it. And, and, the, and the Lord has that feeling constantly. That's why he's a glad God, okay? He's a glad God. And the, the joy of the Lord, the pleasure of the Lord is such a reality around him, okay? So... <laughs> I love him. He's so amazing. Uh, so this, this week is Thanksgiving. And uh, oh, and now you, do you know that? Okay, now, now you know. All right. Yeah, and I, I love that that is built into the calendar of our country. I love that. I'm, so, I, I'm thankful for Thanksgiving. You know, that that is a focus, at least of one day. In our country. You guys see it as well as I do. The entitlement that's been coming over our nation. You know, this gimme, gimme, gimme kind of thing. I deserve because of this or this or this. And, and that is a problem. Because that entitlement does not open up. the. It, it doesn't actually bring what they are wanting. It's thankfulness that does. Okay? So it, it, it's backwards. It's one of the lies of the enemy that contorts the truth. But last week we were talking about the, the, the point of, of, of our identity in Jesus. The point of faith. The point of we identity. The point of all of this is love. Right? It's love. And we talked about to the, the central aspect of love is to rest. To, to rest in, in the love of God, that others around us are also in rest as they're with us. They don't feel like they're walking on eggshells around us. That they're in rest too. We are letting God love us. That, by the way, is one of the most humbling things that you can do 
is to simply let God love you. <laughs> oh, my experience, maybe yours has been also, God, you can love me this far, but no further. I'm, I'm comfortable with this level of love. But if you come more, that's more surrender. That's more vulnerability on my part. That's more humility for me. That's also starting to, starting to show that I have some shame in my life. I have some self-rejection and condemnation. Uh, you know, I, I've been believing false identities about me. So your love is comfortable at this level. But if you come closer, well, I'm not, I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> Let God love you. It's for, his, it's for your freedom that he loves you. So, today, in leading up to Thanksgiving, I want to talk about more of these components of rest. Okay? We cannot rest if we don't let God love us. We just can't. So, I want to start in 2 Peter 1, verse 3. This verse keep has been pounding me all year long. Okay? That means that the Lord's still working it into me. <laughs> Second Peter 1, 3 is just, man, I think about it and I get wrecked. I'm like, oh, oh Lord. Second Peter 1, 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. The the reality of this is still mind-boggling to me. He has given us everything we need for life and for following Him, for devotion to Him. He's given us everything we need. So I look at my life and I see needs. I look at the Word and He says, you have no needs. And I prefer to think that he's right. Yeah. That he's right. So something in me needs to change to agree with what he's saying about me. This, this one verse... <laughs> It's one sentence. Oh, man. It's one sentence. It's saying, look, in me, you have no lack. You have no lack. There is nothing you're missing. We may look at our bodies and be like, I'm missing some health here and there. You know? Or, or might look at finances. I'm missing some funds here and there. Might look at relationships. I'm missing some reconciliation here and there. And yet the Lord declares in the midst of it, you have no lack. Why? Well, he's in the business of calling things that are not as though they were. Okay? And shifting things into the kingdom. Because the kingdom is a no lack zone. The kingdom is a no lack zone. And we live in a no zone. That's right. Thank you for that reminder. Yeah, we live in a no fly zone. Lord of the flies, out. This is a no lack zone also. No lack. And think about now how that ties in with resting. If you have no need, there's no lack. It's a lot easier to rest, isn't it? <laughs> what drives our striving? What drives our work? A lot of times, it's a perceived lack. Oh, my toes are starting to hurt. 
because I'm stepping on my own toes. But yeah, that, that lack, that perceived lack creates fear, right? It also creates a feeling of inadequacy or a belief of inadequacy in yourself. It does all this stuff that doesn't line up with who God made you. So he's declaring over you, you are a person of no lack. Because my divine power has given you everything you need. For everything you face. For life and for following me. You have everything you need. You do not have a lack in your relationship with God. Okay? Because the enemy will lie to you and say, you are not lining up. You, you're, you feel like you're distant from God. And that's exactly the case. And God's saying, what are you talking about? You're not distant from me. My blood brought you close. My blood removed everything that was between you and me. There is no separation between me and you anymore. Okay? This is the reality. You're my son. You're my daughter. I'm your dad. You come to me anytime you want. I'm here. There's nothing between us anymore. But there's this perceived lack again, even in our relationship with the Lord. So there's this profound statement. You have everything you need. The healing in your body is paid for. The reconciliation in your relationships is paid for. The provision that you need is paid for. Everything is paid for for your life and for godliness. There is a no lack zone. It is paid for. Okay, so Jesus is, uh, God is very clear about this. He, he, he doesn't miss any words. I've given you everything you need. Now, live according to that. <laughs> Think like that. Okay, get rid of this lack mentality. Now, let's add another little, um, actually, I wanted to read this uh, verse, 2 Peter 1, 3, out of the Passion Translation. Everything we could ever need for life and complete devotion to God has already been deposited in us by His divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing Him who has called us by name and invited us to come to Him through a glorious manifestation of His goodness. Yeah. This is who we are. We are a no lack people. And now I want to add this one little other scripture on. 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. Okay. 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. It's a fun little addition. In the context, Jesus, uh, Paul is talking to Timothy about people who are trying to do ministry for financial gain, okay? And, and that it's, they think godliness is a means to financial gain, okay? Verse 6 says, but godliness with contentment is great gain or great profit. He's, t- he's talking a financial metaphor here. He's saying the greatest profit there is, is to have godliness with contentment. Okay, now think about back to Second Peter one three. Everything you need has been given to you for life and godliness, and now godliness with contentment is great gain. Huh. So we have everything we need. We add contentment on top. Contentment. And some, some what Belinda mentioned, but others too, is that we thank God even before we see the manifestation of the fullness. Okay? Even if there's that, what looks to be lack, we thank God for the fullness in the midst of it. Because godliness with contentment is great gain. <laughs> okay? So we add contentment. We add thankfulness to it. Okay, add thankfulness to your no lack mentality. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So much of the strife that's in our world, so much of the problems that drive wars, that drive conflict, is because of a perceived lack. 
James chapter 4, verse 1. What is the cause of your conflicts and quarrels with each other? Doesn't the battle begin inside of you as you fight to have your own way and fulfill your own desires? You jealously want what others have, so you begin to see yourself as better than others. You scheme with envy and harm others to selfishly obtain what you crave. That's why you quarrel and fight. And all the time you don't obtain what you want because you won't ask God for it. And if you ask, you won't receive it for you're asking with corrupt motives, seeking only to fulfill your own selfish desires. Oh, so... These conflicts, these, these wars, international, personal, one to another, the conflicts that we have almost every time inevitably, inevitably, inevitably come from selfishness out of a perceived lack. We learn to live selflessly when we agree with God that we have no needs. I don't know it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. We learn to live selflessly when we have no need. When we agree with God that we have no need. Yeah, thank you. The, this, the, this Holy Spirit gives me stuff as I'm preaching. And I'm like, you, you don't know how many times I'm thinking like, man, that was good. Somebody write that down, you know? Jeez. Because I want to look at that later. That hit me, you know? So when, when I vocalize with my mouth lack of some kind through grumbling, complaining, uh, negativity of some kind, I vocalize lack. I am agreeing with hell. Okay? Because grumplaining, grumbling and complaining, okay? Grumplaining is the language, is the worship language of hell, right? That, that complaining, that it's, it's, it's an agreement with hell because that what, what I'm saying is, I have need, I have need, I have need. So I'm grumbling and complaining and I'm negative because I'm saying, I have need. But God's saying, you have no need. <laughs> I've given you everything you need already. We need to turn to the right place. We're going to put our faith in something. Okay? If we put our faith in the lack, then we're going to live out of selfishness with conflict and, and, the, uh, and the confusion and the fear and the depression and all that comes with it. But if we put our faith in the supply, Everything, yeah, I'm the supplier. Everything we need for life and godliness has already been given to you. So I live from the supply. Now I'm living selflessly. Now I'm living carefree. Now I'm living with no stress. Now I'm living with no, with no conflict unless the other party is dealing in the lack. And they're in, but on my end, I don't have any lack. I'm okay. And I will just pour my love on them. You know? So, living. Where are we living from? This world, and you see it, this world is in strong and dire need for people who are living in the fullness of the supply of God and in the contentment of God and living that way, and talking that way, thinking that way, acting that way. This world is in dire need of it. Because right now, it's all selfish and me. And by the way, that's part of God's move on the planet right now is to expose the selfishness. Expose the, the lack and the entitlement and all that. He's exposing it. 
it was always there, but you can see it a lot better now. Okay? So God's doing that, but he's also exposing you and me. He's exposing us as people of fullness, as people of supply, as people who have everything they need. And talk that way and live that way. Think that way. Make decisions that way. I tell you, I have never in my life made a good decision when I did it based out of lack. When I made a financial decision based out of a lack mentality of the finances, that always backfired. Don't do it, man. Or, or you make a decision based out of a lack in a relationship. You decide to avoid. You decide to freeze, bury your head in the sand. You know, whatever. Many of our bad choices comes from a perceived lack. So the Lord is raising up in you and me the power of being a thanksgiver. Okay? You are a thanksgiver. Who's going to enjoy Thanksgiving and gives thankfulness? But you are a thanksgiver. That's who you are. That's how God made you because he himself is a thanksgiver. Okay? He is. We'll look at that in a second here. But look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. Okay? I want to I highlight for us what the power of thankfulness. Okay? What's, what, what is it? What happens when you live as a thanksgiver? When you live in the fullness of the, of the supply of God? What happens? What does it look like? Okay? Thanksgiver. So 1 Timothy chapter 4. All right. Uh, we're going to start reading in verse 1. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, w- when is that? Oh, now. Okay, thank you. Uh, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. In other words, they just don't care. Okay? They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods. So they're putting these extra rules on people. Sounds kind of like Pharisees. Which God... Okay, so to, uh, to uh, forbid people to marry and abstain from eating certain foods, which God created to be received by, with thanksgiving by those who believe and who, who know the truth. Okay, so God created marriage and certain foods to be, all foods actually, to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything God created is good. And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it's consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Because that's what thanksgiving does. It consecrates things with the word of God and with prayer. Okay? Here's the power of you being a thanksgiver. You are able... uh, Paul is talking about here how food even that is dedicated to demons, to idols in the, in the Greek culture and everything. That even food that was sanctified toward them, if it's given thanks over to God, what it does is it changes the substance that the thankfulness is applied to and shifts it over to the kingdom. Okay, it's consecrated. Consecrated means set apart. It's consecrated by the word of God and prayer. And thankfulness comes in, boom, boom, shifts it over. Okay? Thankfulness changes, set, changes the atmosphere. It changes whatever you apply thankfulness toward. It changes that thing and shifts it over to the kingdom because it consecrates it. Okay? So, so here's the power of, of being a thanksgiver. Whatever you apply that contentment of the fullness of the supply to, whatever you apply that to, it's going to shift it from darkness to light. It's going to shift it from the enemy to God. Apply, you put that toward a, a relationship right now that's being dominated by darkness. 
put thankfulness on that thing. And watch that relationship begin shifting over to the kingdom. Okay? Finances. If there's darkness on the finances right now, begin thanking God for the supply. And watch the finances shift to the kingdom. It's the weapon that we have. Guys, we are an army and thanksgiving, thankfulness is one of our weapons in the army. Okay, because it shifts things. It, sh it, it changes atmospheres. Okay, now let's look at what Jesus did. Here's a few instances, okay. He, uh, he applied thankfulness a number of times. One time is when a, um, a little boy's Happy Meal with two loaves of bread and five fish were, were brought to him. And he, what did he do? He thanked God. He gave thanks and broke it up. And then it fed more than 5,000 people. There's 5,000 men, women and children with leftovers. Thankfulness shifted a happy meal into a, enough to feed a huge crowd. Okay? Thankfulness did that. Okay? Jesus also, he thanked, remember on the road to Emmaus, the two guys were walking with him and he's explaining the scriptures and their hearts are burning, not with heartburn, but actually their spirits are burning because they're realizing, whoa, I never saw this before in the scriptures about the Messiah and he's supposed to die and he's going to rise again and wow. And they get to the house and what does Jesus do? He lifts the bread, gives thanks and suddenly what? They disappeared and their eyes were open. Thankfulness opened their eyes. Okay. Now think about this one. Matthew eleven twenty five. It says Jesus is uh, talking about uh, Bethsaida and Chorazin and all the miracles that I have done there. The Sodom and Gomorrah would, would have repented long ago. Woe to you, you know. And then he says this. Father, I thank you that you've chosen to reveal these things not to the wise and the learned, but to the little children. For it was your great pleasure to do this. He thanked God because what was happening was people who were not wise and learned, the disciples, okay, were beginning to operate in the kingdom where before they were fishermen and tax collectors and stuff, at that point, his thankfulness was beginning to move and change their own life to focus on the kingdom, okay? So there, there's different times when God... Oh, here's another one. John chapter 11. Jesus is uh, standing in front of the tomb of Lazarus. Do you remember what he said? Thank you, Father, that you always hear me. <laughs> look, at, look at the thankfulness of Jesus. He's so thankful. Thank you that you always hear me. But I don't say this for my benefit. I say that for the benefit of those listening, here listening to me. So that when they hear Jesus give the command, Lazarus, come out they know that he, that God has heard him. But he thanks God first. See that? He thanks God first. The thankfulness began the resurrection miracle. Thank you that you always hear me. And I'm going to take this man from being in a tomb to standing, living, breathing. <laughs> thankfulness shifts things. It shifts things. It changes atmospheres. Use your weapons. Okay? Why, we have the sword of faith, right? We know that. Ephesians chapter 6, right? We got the sword of faith. Thankfulness is an outflow of faith. Okay? It's part of what's built into that sword. So when you use thankfulness, you're using faith. Okay? You're a thanksgiver. That's how you operate. You operate with faith because you have no needs. 
Okay? So the Lord's encouragement to us is to come back to our identity as thanksgivers. To start using, if we haven't been, start using your weapon of thankfulness. Start using it in the different places where you need to see it operate. Where you need to see a shift take place and change that thing over from darkness to light. Start using it. Lack is a lie. Okay? Lack is a lie. Jesus himself is saying it. You have no need. You have no lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I have need for nothing. Lack is a lie. So where are we embracing, where are we believing lack? Where are we believing that lie? If you're going through the same thing I'm going through, because that's why this verse is pounding me. It's pounding out every place of lack in my life. Every place where I believed, every place where I perceived lack, it is pulverizing that place. So Jesus, he's a thanksgiver. Holy Spirit, he's a thanksgiver. <laughs> the Father, I believe he's a thanksgiver too. And you are in the we. The Father's a thanksgiver. The Son's a thanksgiver. The Holy Spirit's a thanksgiver. You're a thanksgiver. And the power of what's, that's, that's why it works, okay? Because you're agreeing with God. So when, yeah, the substance of his love. You are releasing what God has said and who God is over these people, over these situations, over, the, over what looks like lack. You're releasing God on it. <laughs> so, are you guys ready to agree with your supply and switch out of agreeing with lack? Let's stop believing the, the, the lack lie. Let's stop believing the lack lie. Yeah. And and embrace the supply. Embla embrace the truth of who we really are. Okay? Here we go. Well, why don't we stand up? I, this feels like something we better take standing up. And, and that we're going to agree with God that this is who we are. Yeah. If you have a spiritual language, begin praying in the spirit right now. If you don't have a spiritual language, just begin praising the Lord right now. Okay? Begin praising the Lord. We're going to engage right now with the thanksgiver. Engage with him. Lord, you are the thanksgiver. You have given me everything I need for life and godliness. You have poured out everything I need. There is no lack in my life. I declare, I decree over myself. There is no lack in my life. Lack is a lie. Lack is a lie. Get out of my life, you lie. Get out of my life, you lack. You are not my truth. You are not my reality. My truth is that I have full supply. I have full supply and I have the supplier as my father. The supplier is my God and I am in my God and he is in me. And so I am a thanksgiver. My God is a thanksgiver and I apply right now the thanksgiving to whatever situation I need to. Where do you need to apply it? Do you need to apply it to finances, to relationships, to health? Apply thanksgiving to it right now. Apply thanksgiving to whatever situation where you have perceived a lack. 
where you believe that there's a lack, apply it right now. Shift that thing from lack to supply. Shift it. Yeah. Is there a learning disability? If you have a learning disability, shift that thing from a disability to an ability. Okay? You have a full supply. You have a full supply. I have everything I need for life and godliness. I have everything I need. Yeah. Apply the thankfulness right now. Just keep going. Wherever that needs to, put that thankfulness on it. Put that thankfulness on it right now. In a relationship that needs to be healed, that needs to be reconciled, put that thankfulness. What about somebody you know who you know needs to get saved? Who you know needs Jesus? Put thankfulness on that person right now. Put thankfulness on them. Thank you for their salvation, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that you are mighty to save. God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to continue to re help us renew our minds that we would live and think like sons and daughters of God rather than poor paupers who don't have two pennies to rub together. That we begin thinking and acting like sons and daughters who have full supply, who have everything they need. We don't lack. We have the answer to everything this world faces. We have the answer to everything that I face in my life. I have everything I need. There is no lack in me. There is no lack in you. There is fullness in me and there is fullness in you. There is all supply. All supply is mine because you paid for it. You paid for it, Lord. Yeah. So, we sit at this table that's been prepared in the midst of my enemies and it's overflowing with supply and there's no lack. Even when the enemy comes against me, there's no lack. Get away, you stupid fly. This is a no-fly zone. This is a no-lack zone. This is a full supply zone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the power of the kingdom of God that has everything in it that we ever need, Lord. Thank you that we live from this place. Yeah. If you're here this morning or you're joining us online and you have yet to give your life to Jesus Christ, you are invited into a world where there's no lack. Give your life to Jesus today. Give it over. He wants to give you more than you could ever give him. So if that's you, just pray right now. Tell Jesus, I give my life to you. I surrender myself to you. I trust in your cross, in your resurrection, and your salvation of my life. I trust in you. Thank you that you give me everything I need for life and for godliness according to your divine power at work within me. And that you begin changing my desires to match your own. That selfishness no longer rules me. That lack no longer rules my decisions. I choose Jesus. My supplier my thanksgiver. If you made that decision today, please tell us. Let us know because we want to celebrate with you. We want to help you grow in your relationship. But Lord, we thank you. We really thank you for expanding us into the fullness of everything that you've given. Lord, we, we, we'll never actually fully grasp or get to the bottom of everything that you've given us. We won't. Because it, it, it continues to expand, Lord. Because one of the things that you've given us is yourself. <laughs> so thank you for getting our eyes off of us and onto you.
Lord, let this turn this Thanksgiving holiday into a national transformation day that breaks off the selfishness and the entitlement, that breaks the lack. And shifts this nation into the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. We glorify and praise you. Thank you for the fullness. Thank you for the supply. Thank you for the contentment that we add on top of it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you. In your name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you need prayer for anything, please come forward and get the answer that you need, that you have a perceived need of. Or grab somebody next to you. Also, there are some goodies out there. So help yourself to some goodies. Go out to lunch with somebody today. Just be the family that you meant to be. Made to be. Love you. Blessings on you. Have a great Thanksgiving. And don't forget the fast. We'll start fasting tomorrow.